found myself telling my students what to do for their assignments, what to write, how to structure their essays, what edits to make. So my students wait for my instructions instead of working out what they will or can do before they check in with me. But in order to be increasingly independent in learning to express their ideas effectively and with conviction, they need to have skills for inquiring into their writing. Now, I know children are natural learners. My niece and nephews always ask questions. So, what if I rekindle my students their instinct to ask questions, to be curious to look for or create and develop ideas of their own? What if they learn to formulate good questions that arise from their curiosity? Their questions will lead them to learn through listening, reading and viewing, discuss ideas they have found and develop the ideas they want to write about. What if my students also develop the learner strategies they need for planning, monitoring, reflecting on and improving their writing? They would be writers! Yes, I'll make this a reality in my English language classroom. Let me first revise the plan for my lessons in the next unit of learning. I'll apply my knowledge of writing as a process and my understanding of CLIPS, the principles of EL teaching and learning. This means I will teach writing as a process and in context so that my students can generate, select and organize ideas for their writing that help them meet their needs through the use of language in the real world. I will encourage my students to begin their inquiry by planning for it and formulating their own questions before offering guidance. And in offering students guidance in the writing process, I will provide different levels of support appropriate to their learning needs. When students are ready, I will provide them with many opportunities to co-construct knowledge as they develop, organize and discuss their selected ideas. They will do this through exploratory talk and interactive learning experiences as they consider different perspectives, generate possibilities, evaluate and build on one another's ideas. Hmm, these involve pretty sophisticated thinking. How can I support my students in doing so? Ah, I will model and scaffold the thinking and learning processes so that my students can learn to review, revise and edit their writing. Throughout this unit of learning, my lessons will enable my students to monitor and revise their own writing, reflect on and improve their learning. And if some of them would prefer to present their ideas in a different mode, such as through a planned speech, they can do that too. And I will do these by integrating the teaching and learning of the receptive and productive skills, grammar and vocabulary. Now, let's see how this plan works out. Good morning, everyone. In your geography class, you're studying the relationship between housing and the environment. And I know you're learning to describe the impact that housing has on the environment. Yes, Ms. G, we're looking specifically into the impact of pollution and waste. Ah, guess what? In our English language class today, we're beginning a unit of learning on man and environment too. And we, you and I, will be inquiring into the theme of pollution and environmental conservation. What is it about this theme that excites you? What does it make you wonder about? I'm excited that Singapore is working towards a waste zero nation. Ah, yes. Singapore is working towards being a zero waste nation. <laughs> Sorry, a zero waste nation. Uh, what's a zero waste nation? I'm wondering what can each one of us do to conserve our environment? Those are good questions. So, what can we do to find out what a zero-waste nation is? And what can every one of us do so that we can be a zero-waste nation? I've come across quite a few insightful podcasts, videos, and articles on this theme. Thank you. So, what do you need to learn and do to be able to deliver an effective argument on this theme 
through either a planned speech or writing, Miss G, there's so much information in all these materials. What should we do? Well, you're speaking or writing about the impact of pollution and waste on the environment. Can you recall some key considerations you must think of when you begin to plan your writing or speaking? We need to identify our audience. And we need to be clear about the purpose of our speaking or writing to this audience. Exactly. So how does being clear about your purpose and audience help you deal with the amount of information that you're listening to, reading and viewing here? Why is this idea relevant to the purpose and the audience? Tiger, how is this concept map helping you to think more deeply about the ideas? What will you do next and why? G, now that we've selected the ideas for our essay, how do we go about writing it out to convince others to work towards a zero-waste nation? Now, isn't that an important question? I think you're asking how we can organize the ideas to achieve our writing goal. Well, I'm going to show you how I organize the ideas. As you observe me, Listen to me explain what I'm doing. Now, I'll be very interested to know what's going on in your mind. What are your questions? What connections are you making between what you observe and what you've been learning about? Okay, let's start. Miss G, why are you placing these ideas at the start of the paragraph? I think she's making them topic sentences, the main ideas for each of the paragraphs. Bear, you're thinking hard about this too. Do you agree with Elephant? Oh yes, that reminds me of what we learned last week about topic sentences. And what we will do after writing a topic sentence is to elaborate on it and provide an example. see me doing here? You're changing the sentence. Ah, I'm making changes to the sentence. What kinds of changes am I making? Miss G, you've begun this sentence with words that were originally at the end of the sentence. These words connect very well with the idea in the sentence before it. That's a very sharp observation you've made, Tiger. Now, what else do you observe me doing there? Hmm, you've just put these other words at the end of the sentence? And these words express an idea that is new in the essay so far. Yes, now why do you think I've decided to do all of that? You know what? You're becoming fabulous learners. Over the last few lessons, you have all written either a speech or an essay to explain what a zero-waste nation is and convince your listeners or readers to contribute to making it a reality for Singapore. It's been quite a long process for you to complete all this work. Hey, yes. 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 Awesome. Now, here's a very important question for us to ask ourselves. What have we learned? <laughs> I'm so glad how this IBL approach to the lessons 
has enabled my students to have their own voice in the learning process. Look at how keen they were to bring their knowledge, interests, curiosities and concerns and their learning needs into the classroom. I'll continue to engage the students in inquiry through dialogue. Dialogue is a critical tool in the idea generation stage of speaking, writing and representing. Through exploratory talk, my students have made their thinking visible so they could construct knowledge and understanding collaboratively. In the process, I've prompted them to build the metacognitive learner strategies they need to be aware of their thinking and monitor and regulate their thinking and learning. With IBL, teaching and learning have come alive for me and my students. I can't wait to get to my next class.